Is it working? Can anybody hear me? Hello, hello. Okay, it said go live. Should be live. How's it going, guys? Can anybody hear me? Is it is the volume good? Can anybody hear me? Is it is the volume good? Yeah, that doesn't work like that, does it? All right, well, I hope everybody can hear me. All right, yeah, Blade Walker says he can hear me. How's it going, Blade Walker? The Smo Show? Squat Shot? How's it going, guys? All right, well, for tonight, I figured we'd just keep it simple. Got a few pieces of mail to open up. Um, kind of got it pre-gamed pre a little bit, so... Well, there's definitely a bit of a delay here. Oops. Maybe we'll just do this one at a time. Yep, definitely a delay. That's going to take some getting used to, but yeah, here we is. Everybody have a good uh, good day. Right on, guys. All right, first piece of mail is from um, Big Red EDC. Figure we'll open this one first. Got some channel swag. Nice little card. I don't know if anybody's seen that Saturday Night Live. He actually changed the time on it tonight. Um, he did it at 5 instead of later. But definitely some good stuff. Got some channel swag. Yeah. First time, right? Weird part is, I don't get this nervous jumping out of an airplane, but for some reason, I don't know, something up with the, uh, talking to a camera. It's always exciting, but thanks to Big Red, Big Red EDC. If you're not subscribed to Big Red EDC, check them out. Always a good time. Yeah, I think people wait till the chat gets going, and then they start rolling in. Seems to be the norm. I don't know. Been to a lot of live chats myself. First one I'm hosting, so... Figured uh, nobody else had anything going on, so I'd give it a go. All right, second piece is from um, Zach Stuff. Anybody watch Zach Stuff in there? Angelo, how's it going, man? Good to see you here. Zach Stuff. I think everybody knows Zach Stuff. Everybody's been there at least once, right? But Zach sent us some channel swag as well. Some Zach stuff sicker. Definitely got to work on the lighting. I love the shadows. Keeping it real here, you know, not too high tech. Some Zach stuff stickers. Yeah, the shiny hashtag DSKFS. Do something kind for somebody. Definitely a Zach stuff thing, but uh, spreading the word. Yep, definitely got some lighting issues. I'm going to have to work on that. And the uh, hashtag DSKFS morale patch. Definitely going to find a place on the kit for that. Hey, Rob, how's it going, buddy? Yeah, hit the like button. You can definitely hit the like button. All right, definitely got all that stuff going. And the last piece... Uh, mail call is from, uh, Mikey Paul, Slingshots and Catapults. Some of you know him, some of them don't. Um, yeah, he sent me a piece from his personal collection. And those of you that don't know Mikey Paul, he's also, um, I believe partners with, um, Omega Slingshots, Chuck and Steel there, great guys. 
they're always hosting live chats themselves, they can definitely shoot. Right on, let's see. We got the uh, Omega Slings t-shirt. We'll have to wear that to uh, ECST if we make it there. Definitely hoping to. Going to be a bit of a bike ride, those of you that knows what's going on. Check them out, omegaslings.com. Chuck and Steel and Mikey Paul. Are they in here at all yet, or are they going to make it? Who knows? Very cool. What else we got? All right. A couple of slingy thingy bands. You know, I've never shot one of these. Uh, well, I've shot a slingshot before, but nothing like you guys shoot. So this is definitely going to be a first for me. Some slingy thingy bands. And the best part. Let's see if we can get this so you guys can see it. Everybody see that okay? This is going to be our very first real um, slingy thingy thing. I don't know if you guys saw the live, but Mikey Paul showed this in his live, but we got it here. Alright, let's see what's in here. Little package. I believe these are the clay slingy thingy ammo ball things. Can you say ammo on YouTube? I don't know. Nicer life. What's happening, buddy? How goes it? So I don't know what's in here, maybe 50 or 60 or something like that, I don't know. Target, awful small target, we'll have to add a little bit to that, maybe a little bigger. A couple of targets. A little wrench, probably for changing out your bands. And an Omega Sling sticker, this is very cool, love the Omega Sling swag. Yeah. Definitely nice. Good job on that one, guys. And in the best part, the slingy thingy. So figure out if I can uh, actually shoot one of these. I plan on going out Monday. Monday is going to be the big day. First shot with a real slingy thingy. Maybe someday we'll get uh, we'll get Smo to make us one. Uh, if you guys haven't seen Smo make slingshots yet, that's very cool stuff. Lots of hand sanding, very cool. So that is the slingy thingy. Right on. Put this all back together for the most part. So what everybody do today? Did anybody get out shooting slingshots? Except there's some knife guys in here. Any of the knife guys in the slingshots? Blade Walker, Angelo. Knives or life, you guys do the slingy thingy at all or just the knife thingy? Yeah, Blade Walker. How, how do you like shooting them? You, you have fun with it or? Went fishing. Did you catch anything, Knives or Life? It's okay. You can double the size. We weren't there. My grandfather used to say when it comes to fishing, early to bed, early to rise, fish like hell and make up lies. That's fishing 101 for you. CG slings, tie-in bands. How many did you make, man? How long does that take, roughly? I don't know. I've seen it a little bit, but I think it's edited on YouTube, you know? Yeah, it's okay. A bad day of fishing is better than a good day at work, right? Yeah, Squatch. Squatch went out to lunch with his mom today because Squatch is a bit of a mama's boy, but that's okay. He loves it. So that was our mail call. Like I said, I'm going to go out Monday, make my first shots with this, get it on video. I think my long-term goal with the slingshot, you see it a lot on the bushcraft channels. I mean, the guys are good, but... Have they been shooting all their lives? Is it an acquired skill? Is it something any of us can, can learn how to do? Um, I'm definitely interested in, in finding it out, putting it in part of my kit. And either way, it'll be fun shooting. The community's great. I mean, both communities, um, 
I know some of you are from the Slingshot community, some of you from the Knifeser community, some from both, but both great communities. If, if, uh, Squatch, if you want to put anybody's, um, channel links in there, if you know people with channels, I know Blade Walker just started up a new channel. Uh, if you guys get a chance, check him out. Definitely some casual, awesome, um, stuff going on on his channel. I uh, does some great restoration stuff with knives and everything. Very cool. A lot of fun. Wow, so we got 10 people in the chat now. That's awesome. Better than I thought it was going to be. Um, but that's all good. We're just here to have a good time. Nothing too formal going on, really. Quite frankly, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm winging it. Um, yeah, how did this go for anybody else? Mimo's in the chat. How you doing, Mimo? Canadian cousin from the north there. Mimo's from the Hammett community. I'm not even sure if he knows what that is, but we'll roll with it. Rob, small game hunting. What, what do you catch? Just uh, squirrel, rabbit, pheasant, quail, stuff like that. I figure this can't be bad, you know. I mean, let me know if you guys are having a good time enjoying the chat. Uh, I spent last night like three hours watching a guy sand a slingshot, so I figure whatever I do can't be all that boring. Not that you were boring, Smo. We had a great time, man. I love your craft. But three hours watching a guy sand, I figure if I put anything up, I got to be doing all right. Yeah, I'm not going to open that package right now. Nice and disorganized here. Yeah, not, not going well with the OCD, is it? So, uh, anybody want to do a pocket check? What are you guys carrying tonight, or did you already empty the pockets? Chuck and Steel, what's happening, man? You missed your part. We just done did the um, Omega Sling stuff and everything, buddy. How you doing, Chuck and? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and leave that out for everybody to look at, huh? Anybody seen? Uh, there's Mikey Paul. What's up, Mikey? Here's another look at the slingy thingy. Loving it. Can't wait to try it out. See if I even get the grip thing down. I've seen you guys do it a bunch, but... Probably easier if I wasn't doing a tabletop, but I'm not really set up for the other thing. I'm going to work on that as well. Looking like a pro already, right? Fake it till you make it. Dwayne, how's it going, man? Welcome to the chat. Well, these are kind of more fun than I thought they'd be. Just trying to find my groove here on YouTube. It's not really... I'm used to working in a private place out back where people leave me alone packing parachutes all day. So, definitely something new for me being out on the, uh, the public scene with the YouTube. Anybody seen little Palmer Conley? How's little brother doing? He finally got some sleeper. All right, guys. For the knife, guys. I don't. I don't really have any folders. I got kind of sick of cleaning pocket lint out of folders, so I just switched over to fixed blades. Kaleidoscope and knives. How's it going, man? So, uh, some of you have seen some of these Phobos knives, but definitely my favorite knives by far. Figure I'll bust a couple of these out for you guys to look at. This is the um, Phobos Tier 1 Mini Gen 3. Satin finish. Orange liners. It's um, CPM 1054. Love this thing. 
This is actually, I have the Gen 2 as well. I'll pull that out. We'll do a little comparison of it just so you guys can see it. This is one that um, Eric Hansen of Phobos Knife did up for me. Definitely one of my favorite knives of all time. Um, so this is the uh, Tier 1 Mini Gen 2. I actually bought this uh, back, I believe it was like the end of 2019. And I didn't get it until a little while after. Like I said, it was like a one-off set Eric Hansen had done. But this is the Gen 2 Tier 1 Mini versus the Gen 3 Tier 1 Mini. And there's quite the difference he made in the blade. He added a little bit of meat to that Persian swedge. But all around great knife. The, uh, then he came out with a slightly more compact one. And this is definitely uh, something great. These both have uh, four inch blades, but there's states where you can only carry three and a half inch blades. So he went and made the mini mini. So this is the uh, tier one mini mini. You can compare it to the, the regular mini. And there's a half inch difference in the blade length. The handle's a little bit shorter. And he took the uh, coconut cracker, we'll call it the cro coconut cracker, less than lethal option there. Um, and he shaved that down a bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. Like I said, I got to get work on this lighting thing, but all in due time, right? So there we got the... Uh, Tier 1 Mini Mini, the Mini Gen 3, and the Mini Gen 2 all right there for you guys. What do you guys think? Let's see what's in the comments. I've kind of lost track a little bit. Um, Keith the Knife Freak is here right on. Glad to see you, man. Lemmy, great seeing you as well. BC Jerbs in the house. How you doing, Jerbs, man? Yeah, I figured, man, you got these things going every Friday. I figure I'd give them a try as well. I think just about everybody here has done some lives or something. Yeah, exactly, Blade Walker. We all start somewhere. Like, uh, you know, great things are made from humble beginnings, right? Yeah, you got some, uh, you got some longs and some shorts, though, right, on your channel now? Yeah, Keith, we got knives there for you, buddy. Just maybe not as many as you have. Now, Keith, you make knives as well, right? Yeah, I figure this is good stuff. We got slingy thingies and knives, channel swag. Definitely, we'll bring in the uh, the EDC flashlight as well. I usually carry a. Uh, the Olight Mini Warrior 2. Pretty good flashlight, not too shabby. Maybe I should use this to eliminate some of my shadowing. I don't know. But yeah, I actually... Uh, yeah, I got these because I was always using my bicycle headlight. Um, yeah, I'll show you what I used for years before I uh, finally upgraded it. I've had this for a few years. This is the um, Night Rider Lumina. It's like 700 lumens. It's kind of like a tactical flashlight, but it's not. It's uh, designed to be uh, worn on your helmet or a headlight for your bicycle, but I was bike touring for so long, I just used it as kind of like an EDC flashlight. Um, it works great, runs for a few hours, has three settings. Um, the tail switch is actually great. It's a red light, so it's tactical. You can use it at night around your tent and everything. Um, the only problem I had with this is, um, when the battery's dead, it's a uh, USB rechargeable. It has an integral battery. So you have to wait a couple hours for it to charge, and I kind of got annoyed with that and finally decided to upgrade. So 
I upgraded to the Olight Mini Warrior 2. Works pretty good. You can change out the battery. Um, I even uh, got the backup battery. Of course, that's why I got the flashlight was because I got kind of sick of not being able to change out the battery. So I get this waterproof therm battery case. Pretty much you can stick it on any webbing anywhere you want to. Pretty good deal. So yeah, we always do the pocket checks in the live chats when we talk about what we're carrying. So might as well show a little bit of what I'm carrying. Um, I don't have the Leatherman out right now, but that's okay. Um, does anybody have any questions on any of this stuff? Or Yeah, the O-Lights are pretty good, CG. Definitely, uh, I've enjoyed them. I also use a lot of stream lights as well. Um, used to carry the, uh, the micro stream light and stuff. And I think these things are great with the double clips because anytime you have a hat with a brim on it, it doubles as a headlamp and eliminates your need to, to drag around a headlamp with you. So these are great too. I always carry one of these. I have the, uh, the Olight i3 T EOS as well. Um, pretty good flashlights. I guess when it comes to these small things, they're all pretty much the same. One AAA, one AA. Pretty good stuff all around. Handy to have. You lose them in your pocket, so no complaints on that. So let's get caught up on the chat here. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Brian F. uses a bike light, too. I mean, when, when you're traveling distance and stuff, especially long distance, if you can, the more you can multi-use any tool, the, the more purpose it has, the more value it has, and the less crap you have to carry. So, I mean, some of my bike rides, I think my longest bike ride was from, um, it was in upstate New York, over New York, down to Key West, the zero mile marker. That was, uh, that was a great ride. Uh, it wasn't a race or anything. It, it was just for fun. It, I actually spent like 47 days getting there. Good time, 47 days. I was on the pavement cycling, but I like to say off the pavement, you know, like away from society, doing my own thing. But yeah, these things are great. Night Rider, they've got some newer models and stuff. They got tail lights and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I don't really have any affiliates or anything with any of these guys, so I guess Google that stuff, right? Yeah, Blade Walker. I ride a mountain bike. It's a custom-built Cannondale I built myself. I did a couple shorts on it. I mean, most of my YouTube so far has been the shorts game. Just, like I said, trying to find my groove and seeing what people are interested in and going from there. Yeah, Jose, 47 days, man. Yeah, I was uh, a little bit late for work, but who cares? Um, yeah, I used to work in skydiving, and I worked seasonally. So I would work like spring, summer, fall in the Northeast, uh, New York and uh, Maine, wherever, Massachusetts, uh, not New Hampshire, my home state, though. There's not a skydiving center in uh, in New Hampshire. So and then I would work, you know, with the uh, the rest of the people that travel commute for the winter. I'd go down to Florida and work for the winter. I've worked all over Florida, uh, Key West, uh, Zephyr Hills, Sebastian, uh, Clewiston, Florida, pretty much uh Many places you find a skydiving center is where, where you'd find me. Yeah, the Marauder. I haven't seen that one yet. I'll have to check it out. There's a lot to keep up with with all this EDC stuff between flashlights and all that. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, thanks, Blade Walker. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess after a while, jumping out of airplanes, like putting your pants on in the morning, one leg at a time, gets to be like anything else you do. Um, the price on the mini fixie, yeah, I think you can find them somewhere around, uh, I think they're like 225 to 250 uh, depending on um, whether it's a PVD or satin finish, uh, G10 scales, carbon fiber, uh, things like that. I know Heart of Texas Armory, 
Um, they had a pretty good inventory of them. Also, DLT trading, DLT has them. Um, yeah, so you can go to either one of those places. If you're really looking for one, just go on um, the Phobos main site. He doesn't really sell much on his on his main site, but just click on the tab where to buy, and he has a link to all the, the retailers that you can get them from. Yeah, yeah, you don't even have to worry about jumping out of an airplane. For no extra fee, we'll push. Yeah, Jerbs, I know you uh, you like the natural wood scales. Unfortunately, I don't have any. Um, I guess I had wood scales back in the day on a couple of nights, but that was before they had all that treated wood and everything they have now, and they always seem to get, get them cracked or chipped or they'd fall apart on me. Um, something I would I would look into, though. Yeah, if you guys, Jerbs makes some knives, um, check them out. I know Jerbs has got a knife in the, uh, the knife challenge that Scab is, is holding. Um, should be pretty good. Also, they come in the, um, the leather sheaths. I don't know if you guys have seen these. These are some pretty high quality stuff. And, uh, for the left-handed people out there like me, they're, uh, everything, all of, uh, the Phobos knife sheaths are ambidextrous. Um, these ones are simple. You can just flip them over, but even on the um, the larger fixed blades and stuff, um, same thing. They're all ambidextrous and they're kind of modular sheaths. So I'm gonna do some videos on these in the in the near future as well. Definitely got to work on my long game, but um, I want to be doing more outdoors. So that's that's a big thing as well. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this one yet, the uh, Phobos Tier One BC. This is a Magna Cut 11 and a quarter inch overall. Um, what I like about these is they have the uh, the ferro rod notch, bow drill divot. Not like any of us are really having any friction fires, but it's there if you need it. Major component you don't have to build. Um, something I'm definitely uh, getting into, and we're going to be field testing this hardcore this summer. So check it out. Kind of, well, I didn't really plan on. How much space I needed, huh? Guess we can just put that there. A little bit of eye candy for everybody. Anybody got a favorite piece yet? Okay, Keith. Yeah, we'll have to check it out. I've been meaning to check out your site. You, you have uh, videos as well, right, Keith? Yeah, Mimo, we got all kinds of jokes for the students. Um, yeah, we mess with students all the time. Well, used to. We used to tell them we were out on work release or something. First time uh, jumping. We actually, we had a guy that owned a printing company and made a, a big giant sticker uh, that looked like the books for dummies. And it said, uh, skydive instructor for dummies would leave it under the seat. And we were in the plane climbing to altitude. We'll pull that book out with the... Uh, skydive instructor for dummies and start reading it like we don't know what we're doing it always makes the students feel good but it's a good time for us yeah jerbs is working on something now isn't uh jerbs aren't you making one for uh cheeto cheeto whatever his name is cheeto something it always changes you guys know who i'm talking about or no, you're making a you're making one for Squatch Shot. It's Aries who's making a one for Cheeto, I think. Everybody's making something for somebody. It's a happy little family. Yeah, it's Cheeto Montana this this week. Yeah. Thanks, Jerbs. Thanks for stopping by, man. Always a pleasure seeing you, dude. Wow. 
yeah blade walker you're right there's definitely a lot of good people in the community um slingshot communities um the uh, knife community as well yeah there's a whole list we should probably make a list of all these people um definitely good stuff So did anybody do any pocket checks? What's everybody carrying? Is Smo still around? He's probably busy sanding, right? Was anybody in on that live chat last night with um with with uh Smo? Yeah, Blade Walker, you're definitely right. Um but there's some events, the um ECST. East Coast uh, Slingshot Tournament coming up. That's in Pennsylvania. Um, you know, for the Slingshot people, I, I don't know about all their events, but I definitely know about that one. And then, of course, we have uh, Blade Show Atlanta coming up. Uh, hopefully, get to meet a lot of people there. Neil McKenzie, how's it going, man? Hello, buddy. Yeah, so you're, you're not too far from uh, Blade Show. You going to Blade Show there, Blade Walker? Yeah, money's tight for everybody, man. The struggle's real, but, you know, there's no inflation, right? They got that under wraps. Best economy ever. Well, something might work out for you still, though. You never know. Yeah, Squatch, you didn't make it too long last night, did you? Oh, so she's somewhere. There it is. Does anybody have any questions or anything? Or Okay, Keith is uh, carrying a small Sabenza and Signo. Chuck Richards Mini Pry. Yeah, I definitely got to get another Mini Pry for sure. Tactile pen and my reading glasses. All right, well, yeah, reading glasses are important, right? Teaching hunter safety class this weekend. Right on, man. Everybody needs to learn a little hunter safety, especially nowadays. Too many idiots in the woods with pew-pews. Yeah, I had a, I had the small Sabenza Insigno. Just didn't fit my hand. And, um, yeah, it was the one I won from Tri-State EDC, but it's it's right-hand dedicated, and I'm left-handed, and just wasn't, yeah, it really wasn't digging it. It's kind of like a fifth pocket knife. I wasn't going to cut too much with it. Um, yeah, Papa Rhino has that bad boy nowadays. Yeah, Blade Walker. Hunter safety course is definitely a solid plan, man. So did we say hello to everybody? I didn't miss anybody, did I? I did yell at me. Well, I'll tell you, this is an absolute mess. I'm pretty good at making a mess on here, aren't I? So, one of the cool things I'll mention that um, comes in the Phobos knife packs is this Wicked Wax. This stuff is great. You get like a half ounce of it. I'm going to order some more. Um, 
but this stuff i'm digging it works great on your uh micarta scales g10 um it, it was originally designed for the metal but it also works on leather wood so you can use it on your axe um and it's uh 100 natural like primarily beeswax and I, I actually called up the owner of this place, Fred. Very cool guy, interesting to talk to. And this stuff is so 100% natural, you can use it as a lip balm. So I'm definitely finding a place for this in my kit. Uh, compared to some of the other stuff I use, it's, like I said, multi-use is always the best thing that I look for. And, and uh, yeah, this is definitely the stuff here. If you guys get a chance, check them out. Um, like I said, I don't have an affiliate link for most of this, but... but it's all good. Yes, Mo, we figured you're, you're sanding, man. If, if you stop sanding for a second, how many hours a week do you sand? Like, just curious, because that's... You do a lot of sanding, man. So here is... Uh, the tier one gen three mini in the pvd finish same scales definitely cool stuff so we did some mail call played with some slingy thingy um which yeah i'm very excited thanks again mikey paul if you're still kicking around there um like i said i'm gonna go out monday shoot it get some video and uh see how practical it is to pick up a slingshot and eventually start hunting with it um does anybody have any questions or anything or um no the only one that's that's magna cut is the tier one bc um all of the uh the minis and the mini mini are uh cpm 1054 cm this is the only magna cut one is the uh tier one bc i'd love to see the uh the minis come out in a magna cut as well i think that would be great um especially edc magna cut definitely holds an edge so yeah it'd be great to have a one of the minis in in magna cut Yeah, this is definitely a chunk of Magna Cut. Uh, it's 0.2 wide, 11 and a quarter inches long. Obviously full tang. The tang comes out the other end, and it's got the uh, coconut tester here, you know, just in case you got to do a little less than lethal uh, skull knocking or something. Can you say that? I don't know if I should say that on YouTube. No skull knocking, just coconut checks, right? Density, coconut density test. All right, that's what we call a bad landing in skydiving. It wasn't a bad landing. It was a ground density test. Just making sure everything's solid down here still. So I should have brought out a little more, I think. Um, yeah, I'm not too, too big on too many knives. I mean, I think, I mean, I own a few, that's for sure. But I don't own a boatload. Um... Yeah, for years I used the uh, Spartan Blades. And, uh, yeah, I definitely had a lot of luck with them. Um, S35VN I thought was great. Here, let me move some of this out of the way first. And uh, I'll show you guys some Spartan Blades as well. Definitely got the disorganization going on. It's okay, it's just YouTube, right? Nobody's lives are at risk. But yeah, so um I carried on I bought Spartan Blades years ago. I'd have to call up Curtis and ask him when when it was they were building their uh their showroom. But um this is pretty much what I carried, I don't know, about eight, nine years, I think. Um pretty much in this configuration I get bored and change out the paracord but i've got a thing for piggybacking knives so 
the uh, Horcos and the Enyo seem like pretty solid way to go for that. I'm sure you guys have seen these somewhere before, especially the knife guys, but um, the only thing about the Spartan blades, it kind of like they're good for small work. I mean, they're a field utility combat knife. Um, they're real compact. They're sleek, um, not too heavy. Um, but the only thing is, is it's just not ergonomically great. So if you're using it for any type of extended time, it starts to get uncomfortable. Um, so that's why I ended up switching out nice. But these things were really, I mean, they served me well. No complaints at all. Little Enyo for doing fine stuff. I would um, take the Kydex sheath off, throw it in my pocket, EDC it. Um, great little knives. And then the other one I would carry would be the Frike, which is if I was just going to carry one. I mean, it's a knife, it's sharp, it does what sharp knives are supposed to do. But once again, it's just, there's not much to the scales, there's not much to the ergonomics. So for like everyday thing, I mean, this was originally designed as a fighting knife, but whatever, I don't care, it cuts stuff, so I used it to cut stuff. Um, but yeah, so you have a lot, it's just real skinny. So if you got into doing any type of woodworking, feather sticking, stuff like that, um, yeah, definitely wear gloves and it got uncomfortable after a while. And that's why I switched to the um, the Phobos nice because you've got ergonomics. Um, the grip is comfortable. You can use it for long periods. Um, multiple grips. Doesn't matter what you're doing, really. Definitely gets comfortable. So that's why I ended up switching to the uh, the Phobos knives is mostly for the ergonomics. I actually saw Phobos first times on uh, Prepared Mind 101 with Chris Tanner. I mean, to be honest, when I first saw the thumbnail Phobos, I thought it was like one of those Chinese companies because it just sounds a little goofy like Civivi or WeWe or whatever they're called. Um, but when I found out, you know, I watched the video and Chris Tanner explained uh, Phobos was for operators by operators. It, started making a little sense and he started talking about the man behind the knives and uh, i had good luck with knives that were made by green beret guys so i figured i would have good luck again and and it was better i ended up uh, actually getting a uh eric hansen made the two knives for me um yeah i was in the right place at the right time so um yeah that was why i switched from spartan blades to phobos was because um comfort but i mean like i said spartan blades did everything i needed them to uh no complaints with spartan blades whatsoever customer services was great not that you really need it which is even better but if you're looking for another sheath or some information or something um they're always happy to help out all right um Seeing if I missed any comments or anything. Hey, Papa Rhino, how's it going, man? We were just talking about you. How's the uh, how's the Sabenza, buddy? Yeah, I think the the Sabenza was just a little bit too small for me, and um, yeah, it's a fancy knife. I didn't want to be picking uh, pocket lint out of it and whatnot. Kind of more like the pocket fixy stuff. Um, see, I'll bring out the tier one C here. Is it going to fit? Yeah, it fits. So, yeah, so the difference is uh, what I was looking for in a knife. Like I said, it came down to ergonomics, comfort, grip, stuff like that. Um, the Spartan blade was a little bit light. So the uh, Tier 1C is a full 0.25 uh, inch and uh, 12 and a quarter. It's got some, got some weight to it, so a little bit better chopping action and stuff. And like I said, back to the ergonomics, you've got the the grips. I mean, this, this thing is comfortable in any grip. And once I get better lighting, I'll try to show you the jimping a little better on the Phobos. Um, usually, I'm not a big fan of jimping because it, it gets uncomfortable. And But I don't know how he does it, how he makes it. But this stuff is actually, it's effective, but it doesn't, it's not like putting your thumb on a meat grinder. So, uh. 
Yeah, Papa Ryan, I'm glad you're enjoying it, man. Awesome. Did, did you get it out and use it yet, or is it kind of, are you safe queen in it? It's okay, be honest, buddy. We won't judge. Yeah, Blade Walker, when you check one out, um, make sure it's like if, if you're righty or lefty that it's the right side. It's definitely, it's not an ambidextrous knife for sure. But yeah, this is uh, probably my two favorite knives of all time. The uh, Spartan Blades Horcos and the uh, Phobos Knives Tier 1C. Yeah, we, we will, but we're nice about it, right, Keith? We'll just judge a little bit. I'm going to cut the band before I even get to shoot it. We had a knife accident. Try to pretty it up for you guys a little bit. Well, we've already been at this for 40 my, uh, yeah, 45 minutes. That is awesome. Yeah, you've been busy, uh, Papa Rhino. How many hours a day are you working? Like, got to be upwards of 12. Oh, yeah, the big move. You ready for that? Oh, uh, my watch is the, um, like, the Samsung Galaxy 3, I think. I'm pretty sure. Put an aftermarket band on there. It's okay. I'm not a huge fan of it. I want to get into one of the Garmin's or something. Something um, a little more. I don't need the phone option. I, I haven't had that hooked up. I think it's kind of silly. Yeah, Papa Rhino's like Master Chef guy. Those guys live in the kitchen. Yeah, I still got those doors locked, Neil. Neil's uh, taking a little vacation and uh, hiding out at home. I don't blame you, man. Enjoy, relax your time. Hillbilly slings and wear wears welcome. How's it going? Hey Hillbilly, what do you what do you use for a frame and stuff? Nice, yeah. This is a great mix of people. We got the knife people, the slingshot people, all coming together to I don't know. What is it we're doing? Talking about knives and slingshots and stuff. This is the only one I got. Well, actually, I had one of those um these things are ridiculous. I was gonna do a separate video trying to See what I mean? This thing is bunk. Like, you can't even really fit it in the... I'm sure I could if I moved stuff around, but... This wrist rocket thingy that comes with... Like, 30 rounds, and when you're done, it has a point... Maybe this is for... You know, like, poking somebody in the eye defensively. I don't know. But, like, it's just not practical. What do you do with this? You don't put it in your backpack. That's ridiculous. And who would hang this off of their backpack? This is like for the kids shooting in the backyard... Or something, not at critters, but you know what I'm saying. These things are ridiculous. So, I, you know, I saw the uh, the these things on YouTube, and uh, these guys are taking out all kinds of stuff, um, long shots, like very cool. And this easily, you can EDC this thing, uh, back pocket, cargo pocket, anything. Throw a couple of uh, yeah, what do we call it? The steel shot. Uh, what's the popular one there? 9.5 millimeter, 8 millimeter, whatever. But this is practical. This clunky thing is ridiculous. Like, like I said, it's cool in the backyard for something or whatever, but I don't see me um, putting it in a part of a bushcraft or survival kit or adventure kit, whatever you want to call it. So these things are absolutely ridiculous. So, yeah, so I started down this rabbit hole. 
And uh, that's where I met the Slingshot community. Great bunch of guys. Like I said, Mikey Paul sent this to me out of his personal collection. So, hashtag DSKFS from Mikey and uh, Omega Slings. Definitely check those guys out. Uh, Omega Slings like a one-stop shop. They got everything you need. I think I'm pretty sure, yeah. So, check those guys out. Yeah, Hillbilly. I mean, I think that happens with a lot. Like, oh, I'd like to check out a pocket knife on YouTube. And next thing you know, you're one of those guys with, like, like Mimo, like 120 pocket knives or something. Or some of you guys got insane collections. I mean, this is pretty much my entire set of knives. I bought these. The Spartan Blades, like I said, I'd have to talk to Curtis at Spartan Blades. It was when they were building their showroom in... Uh, North Carolina, right by Fort Bragg, and um, that's when I bought my Spartan Blades, and then I ordered these uh, from Eric Hansen, like, 2019, I got them right at 2020, and I haven't gotten to use them yet, because, you know, along came the thing where we weren't allowed to go out and play, and, and work got canceled, because uh, you couldn't go within six feet of anybody, so we weren't hauling meat out the plane, not doing tandems, whatever you want to call it, um, yeah, we couldn't do that, so, uh, I was going to EDC this in the rigging loft because um, I like having a knife. I used to carry, like I said, one of these two, either the Frake or the Enyo, every day at work. And um, I was going to carry this instead. And then obviously the, the larger knives are when I was out doing my long bike rides, uh, bike touring and stuff, uh, camping, doing all that good stuff for the bigger knives. But um, yeah, now i got a few more. I'm definitely going to get more into the uh, the Phobos Knives collection at a later time. Yeah, I've got like one slingshot. I think I'm working at like, I don't know, I've looked at quite a few. I definitely am um, interested in what Smo's doing. Yeah, Neil, I'm not sure if they let those um these things in, in the tournaments. I don't know whose tournament got here. I know Squatch is involved with a lot. I don't think that these are allowed in the um in the tournaments because of the braces and stuff. I'm not sure. They might have different ones. I don't know. Like I said, I'm just really getting into it. Um I know a lot of the guys are going to the uh, East Coast Slingshot Tournament in Pennsylvania, uh, the end of May. So I plan on swinging by there just to check it out and say hello to everybody and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure that they let those in the tournament. Yeah, CG, I think you're right. Um, yeah, I don't know what the regulations are for the tournaments, but like I said, yeah, see, there's... Jordan, uh, Jordan Smothers, he's, yeah, no braces allowed. Yeah, Jordan, what's the, uh, what's the deal on those? What, what is allowed? Pretty much just like standard frame stuff like this. Is there a limit on the, the bands and everything or it's pretty much just stuff like this. Yeah, Papa Rhino, those are uh, work tough gear. I haven't owned any, but, um. Man, Brother Scab over there, Choir Boys Outdoors, y'all know him. Uh, he speaks the world of those, um, the Work Tough Gear knives. I think he's going to send me some at some point to uh, to field test and try out or something. Looking forward to that. I've heard a lot of good things about the Work Tough Gear knives. Yeah, Neil, I have a, like, yeah, uh, a little bit of, little bit of knowledge here and there. It's hard to keep track of everything. So I did a short video the other day with um, all of my tier one knives. So I figure I'll just show you guys, kind of give you a comparison. So we got the the tier one C. And like I said, this is CPM three V, uh, 0.25 inch uh, 
stock. Uh, yeah, this one's 12 and a quarter inch overall. And then the uh, Tier 1 Mini Gen 2. And like I said, this is the one I'm looking forward to to really beating on the most, really getting some field testing out of is the uh, the Tier 1 BC. This is the Magna Cut one. Um, wow, I could probably get in trouble for this, but who cares? Uh, the ferro rod concept on this is awesome. I wonder how that's going to work out for me, though. Still got paint on it, but... Probably shouldn't be doing that in the house, but whatever, you know? It's all good. But yeah, um, it's a newer ferro rod, still has the paint on it. Yeah, she just came in and said, don't be doing that in the house, right? Thanks, honey. But uh, you guys get the point, right? <laughs> Nothing but, well, we'll just do it once more for demonstration purposes. So, yeah, all right, stop playing with that. Y'all get the point, right? Kind of smells a little funny in here now. Yeah, I think we're all like that Papa Rhino, like jack of all trades, master of none. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to do it a little differently with the knives because there's so many people doing reviews on so many knives. Um, I'm going to try to just like beat up one one uh, set of knives. Yeah, there you go. The smoke show, he's got, he's got some of the rules there. Yeah, you got to remember when you're doing this on YouTube, the uh, the missus might be watching. So, we'll not play with this anymore for now. We'll just, next live chat we'll do, we'll wait until she's at work, then we'll do it. And then, yeah, the Tier 1 Mini Gen 3 the with the uh, PVD coating. And then the satin finish, these are all, like I said, all the Tier 1 Minis and Mini Minis are um, CPM 1054. Yeah, Neil, thanks for the heads up a little bit late, buddy. Um, yeah, but we're trained professionals here, right? All right, Keith, you got to run, man. Hey, thanks for stopping by. First live chat. Well, uh, I'm sure we'll see you again at someplace this weekend if not we'll see you i'm sure we'll see you soon thanks for uh thanks for stopping by again keith definitely appreciate it buddy and then the mini mini i think this one is working out to be my favorite now one of the cool things about the um the tier one mini series is the scales are like interchangeable so you could take the scales from the uh mini and put it on the mini mini and if you like the skeleton eye scales on the the gen 3 mini you can switch them over back and forth which i'll do at some point i'll, I'll switch them around i'm not going to do it now and tie you guys up for 30 minutes uh watching me take screws out and everything but um it's definitely cool and if you have like a gen 2 the gen 2 scales will fit on the gen 3 and the mini mini so I'm kind of looking at it as it's really a cool, um, it's a very cool, like, modular EDC system, which is something definitely a little different. I mean, I know you can get aftermarket scales for knives and everything, but to have them interchangeable like that, I, I thought was pretty cool. It's something I'm definitely going to, um, I'm going to play with some more and, and keep you guys updated. Yeah, Squatch has been kind of eyeing the Mini Mini for, for a little bit. Yeah, it's this one you like, right, Squatch? Or is it the uh, the Gen 3? It's the Mini Mini, right? Did uh, anybody new, anybody sharing their, um, their pocket carry? Did everybody get in on that? Or did we miss too many people? Yeah.
Yeah, this is this the one you're talking about there, CG? This actually is an orange. I think once again I've, I've got the shoddy lighting. It's kind of like. Or are you talking about the orange liner? There, there's a few with orange liners, but this one, this is actually kind of. Let's see if we can get the. It's more like a a brownish um, G10 with uh, black liners. Yeah, this is kind of, yeah, it's not really an orange. It's kind of like a brownish. Like a dark natural micarta or something. It's kind of hard to see. Is that, or does it still look orange? Kind of need that disclaimer, you know, um, colors may vary depending on your monitor settings. I think that's, and it doesn't help much yet. This is a, a darker micarta on this one. It's like a chocolate brown or something is what it's called with black liners. Yeah, we got to work on that lighting. I got to talk to some of these guys about, hey, what do you do for the uh, the lighting? I know there's all sorts of it. I've been looking into it, but originally I wasn't planning on doing any indoor stuff. I was going to do completely outdoors, but the way everything's changed, it's kind of, it's hard to find outdoor places where you can go. Yeah, Papa Rhino, the Gen 3, which one do you like, the PVD or the, the satin finish? On the Gen 3. I'm kind of like. Uh, I always go for the PVD coatings. Because uh, I spent a lot of time down south. Florida and whatnot, And it just seems it's more corrosion resistant. Less to worry about. You don't have to treat the, the steel as often. Double D's in the house. How's it going buddy? Double D's is one of the slingy thingy guys as well. He just made his own uh, his own frame out of aluminum, right, Double? That aluminum frame is looking good, man. Yeah, and... Um, if you're a fan of the leather, I got a couple of Kydex sheets, but they're stuck behind the tripod now. I'll have to do those at another time. But all of the uh, the Phobos knives, they come with, um, these are all handcrafted leather. And uh, definitely quality stuff. Uh, he does have Kydex options for some of it, and they're coming out with more and more. Uh, I'm excited about it. Um, yeah, the larger ones, they, they come with the uh, the scout carry option. And the belt loop is fully removable. So if you decide to sc uh, scout carry it, it won't be in your way. Likewise, all of these straps are fully removable. So if you're going to belt carry it and you don't want to worry about snap uh, strap snagging and stuff, then uh, it's all removable modular. Um, like I said, I've got Kydex, but... They're buried right now. I'll have to bring those out next time. Um, one of the things that people ask me a lot about on this knife set, on uh, the ones that I had done, I usually have it piggybacked, but I took it off. It's no big deal. Um, all I did was I took the uh, the scout carry straps, moved them down, and staggered them. And then with the, uh, the mini sheath, I just feed it through. Yeah, I don't want to mess up the knives. You feed it through the belt loop on the tier one mini sheath alternately and that's kind of how we have it set up for a piggyback um yeah so then i just uh set it up so the snaps were on the back because yeah a lot of people have asked me about this and it's just a matter of moving the straps around i don't know i guess it's the parachute rigger of me just messing around with gear and that's how I did the uh, the piggyback. And then I moved the uh, ferro rod up to the top. I, I like it a lot better. And the sheets also have uh, 
pretty, I think they're 65 or 75 pound magnets uh, in the bottom. So it provides a lot of sheath retention in, the, in all the sheaths. Um, so when you put it in, it's, uh, it's definitely got some retention there. It's not just going to fly out on you. Um, this is the older sheath. It doesn't have the top strap, but I'm fine with it. I thoroughly enjoy it the way it is. And, um, you know, we're not doing cupcake commando stuff, jumping out of airplanes and everything, running through the bushes. So I haven't had any, I'm not really worried about losing it. But this is the set that everybody seems to like. And, uh, whoops. That's kind of how I rigged that up. At some point, um, there's a real cool Kydex maker over in Maine. Uh, Black Bear Custom Kydex. At some point, I kind of want to have a, a Kydex sheath made for this this set as well. I think that would be uh, that would be pretty hot stuff. All right, just checking through the comments, making sure I didn't miss anything. Um, anybody got any questions, suggestions? Yeah, D, is that, uh, that slingshot looked great, man. And it shoots straight, too. That's the important part, right? Hopefully, uh, Mikey Paul sent me one that shoots straight. We know it's, uh, it'll be a equipment issue if it doesn't. So I think the next thing I might mess around with is um, the uh, the Tier 1 BC with maybe the Mini Mini or something. I think that might be uh, that might be a great combo. A little too good maybe. would uh definitely be the lighter of the two substant yeah substantially lighter we should do a swap for for what smell yeah i'm definitely interested in the frames you're making man uh I thoroughly enjoyed that. But yeah, I would want to do one of the, um, what's that, plus the BDPE or something? Yeah, I'd, I'd probably lose my mind if I got a, a frame strike with one of yours. What do you think in there, Jordan? Yeah, that's it. HDPE. Everything's got to be an acronym nowadays. I don't know. I don't completely understand that, but I don't know. I guess it's easier, but then it just gets confusing from one thing to the other. Yeah, so I've always had a piggyback thing. Um, I think it's like my grandfather way back in the day brought back a kukri from world war ii that had two smaller knives uh connected to it and um he just explained all oh, the smaller ones are for eating and whatnot and the the bigger ones i was a bit young so he just told me that's for getting business done and you don't want to use them for eating after you're done getting business done but i always like the piggyback concept um always been very cool um and it's practical uh, I, uh, I, um, yeah, I think that the more you divide up the use of your knives, the less you have to sharpen them. So, you know, if you're going out for a week or something and, you know, depending on what you're doing, you spend less time sharpening, uh, especially with the new steels, these things hold an edge, the, um, magna cut and everything. You guys all know that the CPM three V holds a great edge. Yeah. Kelly Weaver. Yeah. The piggyback style is, I, I get like so many questions about that. Like, how do you do it? Um, Kelly, did you see how we, we piggybacked the, the Phobos knives there? 
because I get a lot of people like, where'd you get the sheaths? And they're just, they're the, the stock sheaths. They're stock, but they're handmade. Um, I just rearranged the scout carry straps and ended up with uh, what you see. So, yeah, I just moved the scout strap down. I staggered them kind of like a rock climber thing, like stagger your carabiners. And, um, yeah, that's what I ended up with. And it's, it's on there good. It's not going anywhere. But, yeah, I'm a huge fan of it. Like I said, I think, I mean, even back in the day, I don't know if you guys... Some of the older guys, the Gerber LMF and BMF, when the uh, the sheets came with the little strap, I used to piggyback either the um, the Gerber Multi Tool or the Gerber Gator. Yeah, Kelly, it's super simple. I don't know. I don't know why some people made it sound like rocket science, but yeah, it's usually easy to do. Um, even on the nylon sheets and stuff, if this one you really can't tell too much. I kind of have it so it's. It's in there pretty tight, but I just uh, lay some paracord on there. There's uh, like a molly set behind it. And if you know knots a little bit, it's super simple to do. Um, and then I just threw a, man, they call them ranger bands, but we always made them out of bicycle tires. You just cut whatever size you want off of whatever size uh, tube, mountain bike, road bike, whatever. And you've got heavy duty rubber bands, but I guess they sound cooler when you say ranger bands, so... Yeah, we got Ranger bands, man, but they're just bicycle tubes cut up. Yeah, this is the one I'm going to mess with next, I think. I think I'm going to work on... Throw this on here. I'd like to uh, um, get some black and red scales as well. Or something. Match them up. Gear's got to match, right? Oh, yeah, so, Kelly, yeah, you missed how I piggyback. You also missed me getting in trouble for messing with the fire rod in the house, too. Um, that's always fun. Yep. Um, my preferred method of sharpening, uh, to be honest, most of the time, I don't really have to sharpen. I just strop. If, if you just keep your, keep your knife honed, uh, you really don't have to sharpen it. Uh, I'm looking into other methods of sharpening, though, and field sharpening and stuff, so something I'm working on. But yeah, the, um, the CPM3V, unless you do something that's going to damage your blade, I just keep it sharp with just the stropping paddles. Um, just simple stropping paddle. Uh, usually just... Uh, Use the, the Bark River Green Compound on one side and then bare leather. And that's all I really use to keep everything sharp. Uh, same thing with the S35VN. Um, I didn't have to do any real sharpening. And usually traveling, I didn't carry too much sharpening with me. So I'd find a buddy and, and uh, get it sharp somehow. But yeah, the uh, these are just Beavercraft stropping paddles. These were both gifted to me... Um, I got this one first and I, you know, got really into stropping and then um, got this one as a Christmas present as well. So, um, yeah, I haven't put any compound on this one. I just kept this one bare leather. So I'm, I'm looking into probably doing some of the diamond compounds. Anybody who knows Kyle, Kyle Coonley? Uh, yeah, he's giving me some great advice on, on this. So before I drop any money into it, kind of gonna have a solid plan going but yeah i just mostly mostly use a stropping paddle yeah anybody seen kyle he's usually kicking around he's got some dad jokes too Yeah, Kelly, definitely. The S35 is easy to keep sharp. Uh, I mean, before I got into Spartan Blades, I mean, I had a few nice knives, but most of them were kind of junky. Um, and it was always a struggle to keep them sharp. So when I made the upgrade to uh, 
to S35VN. I mean, it was like, wow. And if you're using a knife like a knife, you, you shouldn't have to sharpen it all the time. I mean, most of us aren't cutting cinder blocks and cutting frying pans in half and, you know, using it as a, as a, a stepping stool or step to get to our tree stand or, or whatever. You know, we use them as knives. And be honest, I, I think the number one thing I cut with my knives out camping and stuff like that would be like summer sausage, you know, because you don't have to refrigerate it. But I try to be a little bit classy in the field and, you know, cut it instead of gnawing on it like a like a savage. So, yeah, you're definitely right. I mean, like, the uh, these things hold an edge for a long time. And uh, same thing, you just kind of do some stropping with it. And uh, you keep it sharp. I do like, I don't know if anybody's seen them. You know, Trend has those little, like, their business card size uh, diamond sharpeners. Kind of wouldn't mind throwing something like that in the kit. In case I do have to do some actual sharpening. But I think hey, that not like a, some type of compact stropping paddle would be really awesome as well. Yeah, maybe I'll just take these out of here for now. Yeah, what do you what do you guys use? Any preferences? Like, what do you guys sharpen with in the field or sharpen with at home? Yeah, so Kelly, you rocked the fright too. Yeah, I remember you um you were looking into the Phobos knives, but you had Spartan blades, so you weren't sure, but they get along pretty well, I think, the Spartan blades and the Phobos knives. They haven't had any issues yet, but I really don't leave them unsupervised too much. Um Yeah, so when I would EDC this, typically I just use the Kydex nothing on it, and then I just slide it in my pocket. If you have like the um some of them, like the 511 strike pants, I like wearing those to work because uh, pockets are convenient when you're a parachute rigger carrying around all kinds of garbage. Um, yeah, I used to slip this in that front, you know, I think it's a knife pocket or whatever it's for. Um, but yeah, it's uh, pretty compact and everything. Like I said, I have a Kydex sheath, which I'm going to get in and do a video on um, that the uh, Tier 1 Minis and the Mini Mini fit in. That's some next level Kydex option stuff. But like I said, I'm going to do a video on it. Okay, so you scout, you scout carry the, the Freight. That's cool. Yeah, I've never been big on uh, scout carrying. I guess it's something you got to get used to. But I always feel like I'm going to, you know, miss the sheath and cut a belt loop or something or, or worse. So I... I Kind of like, I'm not real comfortable scout carry. I think it's a little more awkward than the um, appendix carry, you know, with your pew pew. Yeah, Kelly, if you've got any questions on the Phobos Nice, let me know. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a tough decision depending on, I mean, if you're used to carrying the Frike, I would say, uh, I mean, there's a good comparison between the two. The uh, the Mini Gen 3 is a little bit bigger, but you do have better scales. It's more comfort. I, I talked about that a little bit, where if you're using the Frake for a while, it's not like as ergonomically friendly. I mean, it's designed primarily as a fighting knife, um, but if you're using it as like an EDC knife, if you get into using it and it gets a little uncomfortable, Whereas the ergonomics on the um, on the Phobos is some next level, to be honest. I also like the uh, there's uh, like more aggressive jumping, but it's it's comfortable in hand. It, at no point does it get uncomfortable, if that makes sense. Um, it's like well rounded, very effective. It like creates a grip rather than digging in. Uh, but with the Freik, maybe the uh, good thing I got band aids handy, right? I'm going to end up needing one, maybe. Um, the Mini Mini might be a better choice. It's a little bit closer in size. It has the uh, the skeletonized scales. So you can get carbon fiber as well if you want to lighten it up a bit. But it is a little bit thicker and a little bit more comfortable. So, yeah, and if you're scout carrying it, I don't think that... The little bit of thickness is going to change. 
And of course, there's a bunch of different um, scale options, different colors and stuff that you can get on the Phobos. So, and if you don't like the skeletonized scales, you can get solid scales and put it on the Mini Mini as well. I know that uh, they're going to be coming out with some, some uh, aftermarket or after-purchase scales you can get. So, a little bit of comparison. Yeah, the blade on the, the Tier 1 Mini Mini is 3.5 inches, and on the Gen 3, it's 4 inches. So, you do have uh, a little bit of difference there, and I think it's probably about only like a quarter inch. Quarter inch, maybe th uh, a little bit more, maybe three-eighths of an inch different in blade length between the Frike and the Mini Mini. So yeah, if you're looking for a Frike replacement, I think the Mini Mini might be your best choice. Hey, Forrest, how you doing, man? Yeah, so Kelly, if that's what you're looking for, a little bit more to hold on to, um, yeah, this would be a good choice. Either one of them would be a good choice, but the Mini Mini is kind of closer in size, weight. Um, I think you'll definitely enjoy it. I don't know why I still have a lanyard on here. I usually take it off. I use this a lot for food back in the day, so I always took the lanyard off instead of holding it out the way. Does anybody else have that problem? Yeah, here, let's, uh, Should probably center this too, right? Are you done with OCD? Yeah, you know me. Just kidding, I have CDO. Yeah, CDO is a lot like OCD, only we're better because we put that shit in a proper alphabetical order the way it should be. Just saying, you know. Yeah, does anybody else have any questions or any thoughts, opinions, suggestions, questions? Yeah, Hillbilly, that's the way to do it, making your own strops. Do you, do you have a channel? Do you show how to do that? I mean, I know there's a, there's a few people doing it, but everybody does it a little differently. It's always interesting to see how it's done. So I don't know if you got in here late, but this is the uh, slingy thingy Mikey Paul sent me from Mikey Paul Slingshot and Catapults. Omega, uh, yeah, Omega Slings USA. Um, the mini gen two, that's, uh, I like that as well. I'm not sure. I don't think you can get these anymore. I think you'd have to find one on the, the secondary market, but there's the, uh, the gen two. It's uh pretty similar, but there's definitely, uh, more beef to the blade on the gen three. Yeah, I think you'd have to find the uh, the Gen Two on the secondary market. I don't think um, I don't think he's uh, making them anymore um, because he, he came out with the Gen Three. Yeah, they're they're uh, definitely hard to find. Yeah, Neil, so that's close that's close to the uh the tier one C. The tier one C's um 
12 and a quarter inches. Um, it's CPM 3V. And this is definitely on the bigger side for knives that I've owned. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know, I was just never, like, once you get to a certain size for outdoor stuff, um, that's when I drop the knife and go to a saw and a hatchet. And then from there, I just go to a bigger saw and an axe. Um, I never got into the, the real big chopping knives, but, uh, this one I got for that reason. It's, it's big. It's got a little, it's got some heft to it. So if you're just delimbing something real quick, um, definitely cool, but you can choke up on it and do some fine work if you need to. Um, definitely all around great knife. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, if you can't find one, Kelly, yeah, that's, you're not getting mine, that's for sure. This one's a keeper. Um, yeah, this set is, is a one of a kind for me. Uh, this is the first time in my life, uh, that I, I didn't, I bought a knife and it didn't come in a box off a shelf where the maker actually made the knife for me. So, uh, something I never thought I would see in my lifetime. So this is, uh, this is a keeper for sure. Not, not a safe clean. It definitely, it's seen a little bit of use. It's going to seen some more use, but, um, yeah, this is a, this is kind of like my grail knife set. So I think that's why the, the Sabenza was easy to let go. It wasn't really a grail knife thing for me. It was something I won, but this is something that, uh, that I definitely wanted or, you know, you guys get it. You know how it is. Yeah, they're all keepers, right? Yeah, definitely. These are all keepers. Um, for sure but yeah I, I think um i think you'd still be pretty happy with the gen 3 though kelly um because the differences are kind of subtle you know the the scales are pretty close to the same uh you can actually put the uh the gen 2 scales on the gen 3 knife but there's a bit more to the blade but the sheath size is is about the same um so as far as pro like carry profile goes, the sheaths are pretty much identical. So the, the carry profile would be almost identical, right? And uh, the strap on the Gen 3 sheaths, they're uh, they're removable, so you can actually take the uh, the sheath off the, the strap off the sheath. So the sheaths are pretty cool, um, definitely close. And like I said, the biggest difference between the Gen 2 and the Gen 3 is in the blade. Uh, the, the fit and finish and everything is, is very similar. And you, like I said, you can take the, uh, the Gen 2 scales will go on the Gen 3 knife, so it's all doable. Yeah, in fact, um, you can even put the Gen 3 in the, um, the Gen 2 sheath and it fits great. I mean, this one's a little bit more broken in. It's got some use, but you can fit the, uh, the Gen 3. I mean, the sheaths are the identi almost identical. Uh, the difference is, is this, these ones were, uh, you know, oil dipped. I think DLT offers that as well. Uh, they, they oil dip the sheaths. Um, so you could do that with this one. Um, you could treat it with the Wicked Wax. But if you're really making, looking to make it subtle, I mean, you can talk to some leather guys. That I'm sure there's some leather geeks out there that can outdo me as far as knowledge and stuff. But um, these are the same sheaths for the most part, except for the, uh, the strap was added, but that's removable. And this one is oil dipped, and this one hasn't been. Yeah, there's uh, different carry options even on the um, on the sheath. It has the uh, scout carry, so you can run your belt through scout carry it. Um, you can carry it traditionally. Um, you can put one of the easy clips on here. 
so multiple carry options for sure. And like you said, you scout carry, so it'd just be a matter of, you know, running your belt through it and you're all set. Yeah, the sheaths are what's, I mean, these are high quality. So I think it's something to take into consideration, you know, when you're looking at the purchase price. Um, so, uh, I mean, I, I don't know, some probably 50 to $75 common for stuff like this uh, from what I've seen. So the sheaths definitely um, make it worth it. The tier one mini mini definitely has a, a smaller sheath. So you can see the difference in size. It's uh, it's about the same thickness though, maybe just a smidge thinner, and you can see the magnets kind of want to fight each other. But yeah, so if you're looking for lower profile. The uh, mini mini, but the uh, the mini Gen three, pretty compact as well. Yeah, so uh, yeah, if you're definitely doing a a concealed carry, maybe the Gen uh, the mini mini might be a a better option. It's a little little more compact and easier to carry scout carry, I think. All right, did I miss anybody's questions? If I did, just go ahead and drop it again. Or, um... Yeah, they're definitely quality. Um, I know Eric tries to make his knife so that they're, you know, they're high quality but still uh, cost effective. You know, he doesn't overdo it on the boxes and stuff like that. He'd rather put the money into the knives. So always a plus. I mean, I don't really plan on my knives being in a box too much. So, you know, I know some of the companies go over the top with boxes and whatnot. So um, I'd rather see the quality in the knife. All right. Does anybody else have any questions or anything? Or We've been kind of, we've been at it for an hour and a half. So probably going to wrap it up here pretty quick for the first live. Um, but want to make sure we we answered everybody and I don't know. Leon might have fallen asleep again. I know he uh, he fell asleep last night at um at Smos and stuff. So, <laughs> Leon, you still out there, buddy? Yeah, I think we lost Leon. I'll have to I'll blow up his phone as soon as we're done with this. So Yeah, we'll we'll have to find another a backup moderator for when uh when Leon needs his naps. He had a rough day, you know. He went out to lunch with mom and stuff, so <clears throat> No, there he is. We knew we'd wake him up. Did you have a nice nap, Squatchy? Right on. All right, Squatch. We, we thought you fell asleep again, you know, because that's never happened. But, hey, I want to thank everybody for coming out to our first live chat. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, not sure when we'll do the next one. We'll, we'll do them periodically, though. Um, I don't think it's something I'm going to schedule every week, but definitely going to have some fun. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for showing up. It's I, I definitely appreciate it. Uh, I think it's a great way for me to start connecting with the community um, as, as a channel. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Something I'm working past talking to inanimate objects has not been a thing for me. So, and then um, yeah, I notice when I go out in the woods and I try to do a little bit of video, I go out in the woods for the peace and quiet and I don't have a microphone yet. So I end up yelling at the, the camera and I, I kind of I annoy myself. 
So I'm something I'm gonna I'm gonna work on either I'm gonna narrate it after or add some uh, some text in or uh, get a microphone. Who knows? Um, but we'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, there's no point in going out in the woods and yelling if I annoy myself. I'm going out there for the peace and quiet. So uh, we'll sort it out. Like I said, I'm going out Monday. Um, I'm gonna do some test shots and first shots with the slingy thingy. See how that works out. And uh, hopefully I'll have that posted either later Monday, if not Tuesday. So, yeah, it was great. Yeah, Kelly, hopefully we helped you out with some of your decisions there. Uh, it was great that I had the Frike as well, so I had a good comparison for you. Um, if you got any more questions, though, you know, shoot me an email, whatever. Um, anybody else before we close this out? I'm not really, I should have learned how to close this out before I did this, because I'm not really quite sure how you turn this, make this stop. So we'll, we'll have to figure that out. <laughs> Neil, yeah, great seeing you, man. Always a pleasure, dude. Squatch, thanks for moderating. Fortunately, we didn't have to kick any trash out. Always a plus. Keep the trolls at bay. Everybody, thanks, Squatch, for uh, for moderate, for being a uh, master moderator. And um, all right, guys, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Uh, where's the button? This button? Are you sure you want to exit to stop streaming? Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks again. We're going to um, stop streaming now. Have a great night. We'll see you soon.